So in the handout, we have, can you see it? Example 1.2. Okay, sir. Says that a, bron a bronze spare pinion rotating at yes, sir. Uh, 600 RPM drives a cast iron spare gear at a transmission ratio of 4.1 or 4 is to 1. Sorry, the allowable static stress for bronze pinion for the bronze pinion and the cast iron are 84 and 105 megapascals, respectively. The pinion has 16 standard 20 degree full depth involute teeth of model 8 millimeters. The face width of both the gears is 90 millimeters. And we have to determine the power that can be transmitted from the standpoint of strength, okay? So based on the strength of this gear set, how much power can be transmitted? So now we have to determine the power. All right, so um, I'm using my virtual whiteboard here and I have outline of the information okay so first of all first of all we have been given um we've been given the uh, speed of the pinion so we have the rpm of the pinion we call it np is equal to um 600 eh? 600 RPM. And then we have the um, gear ratio, the gear ratio, which is also the velocity ratio, say V R is equal to F four. So we have four is to one for the gear ratio. We also have the allowable static stress. Okay, so we have allowable static stress for the uh, pinion and then for the gear. The pinion is made of bronze, so the allowable static stress for it is different from that of the gear. So let's call it sigma OP. That is equal to um, 84. Megapascal. Then we have that of the gear. Um, so that would be G. So we have sigma O G for gear is equal to one zero five megapascal. And um, we are we also have the number of teeth for the pinion. So let's call it T, T. Number of teeth on the pinion is 16. And uh, we're given the model. The model M is eight millimeters. And the face width has also been given. So we have the face width is B, that is, um, 90. The face width is 90 millimeters. Okay, so these are the um, information we have. All right. So we have this information here. Now we are to determine the power that can be transmitted. This one is 600, okay. So we have 600 RPM. Okay, so what do we do first? Who can give a suggestion? 
Are you there? What do you think should be done? Hello? Yes, sir. Talk, talk now. We are talking. That is why it's a live class so that we can interact together. You said? Okay, um, we, we said something that to determine the, to design gears, we have to, so for the standpoint of strength, we have to look at the gear that is uh, weaker, okay? And um, we mentioned earlier that if the gears are made of the same material, then the pinion is the weaker element. But if they are made of dissimilar material, okay, different materials, like in this case where we have the pinion made of bronze and then the gear made of cast iron, we need to determine which of the two is weak, okay? We're given the uh, allowable static stress for each of them. So we can determine the strength factor. We already know um, that the strength factor, all right, is a product of the allowable static stress, um, then the Lewis form factor, YP. All right, and um, we also need to determine the velocity factor. The velocity factor has to be determined, CV. And if we determine the CV, we'll be able to, from that point, determine, um, we can determine the strength, or let me say the, the uh, load the, tang the transmitted load, the WT. Okay. And the WT will help us to determine the power that we can transmit with it. So we need to determine all these parameters because if you look at the Lewis uh, uh, equation, the Lewis equation, uh, it states that uh, W, let me. Um, write it here, WT, okay, is equal to uh, sigma, is equal to sigma naught times the CV, which is the velocity factor, uh, times the face width, okay. So we have this one here, times the face width, times pi, times the model times y, which is the Lewis form factor. So over here, we need to determine the CV, okay? We have to determine CV. The model we're given, we need to determine the y, all right? Then from there, we'll be able to determine the WT. If we have the WT, from WT, knowing the velocity, that is the pitch line velocity of the gear, we can determine the uh, power that this gear can be transmitted. Okay, you can transmit the power that this gear can transmit. All right, so from the parameters that we have been given, we can say that we have the number of teeth for the pinion, which is TP. And then we also have the model, which is eight millimeters. So to determine the uh, pitch line velocity, which is the first thing we have to determine, pitch line velocity, we need to determine the D.
So we need to determine the D, which is the um, pitch circle diameter for the pinion. We know the pinion number of teeth and then the model. And that will give us the um, so we have M times TP to be equal to the uh, pitch circle diameter for the pinion. Eight times 16. And that will give us what? If you calculate that, what do you get? Uh, what's the value? I want you to work along with me. It's, it's not just uh, me alone talking. So it's what? One, two, eight. Eight times 16. So you have one, one two, eight, eight one, millimeters. Seven, okay. From here, we can determine the velocity, okay. the pitch line velocity. So we have pitch line velocity V to be equal to uh, pi dp times np divided by 60. And I think this one, we're able to derive in the other time in class, how we obtain. So here is like we are transferring the uh, rotational velocity, that is the RPM into linear velocity. Okay, and you use this formula here. And you need to note that the DP should be in meters. So over here where we are having uh, 128 millimeters, we have to convert it to meters, which will be 0 0.128 in meters, okay? So we substitute that into this equation and that will give us pi, um, so that will give us pi, times 0 0.128, the NP we have 600, so 600 divided by 60. If you calculate this one, what answer do you get? Can you do that quickly? Uh -huh. What do you have? 4.021. Okay, so we have zero two one. Four point okay. Zero two one. And the unit will be in what? What will be the unit? Uh -huh. Is that you don't know? So we'll have the unit in meters per second. This is a linear velocity. So we have meters per second as the unit. Now we have this as the pitch line velocity. And therefore, to determine the CV, which is the velocity factor, we need to go to the equation that we use for that. And that one, we stated it earlier on, that the, depending on the pitch line velocity, there are values for the velocity factor, which we can use, okay? So that is, these are the equations here for the pitch line velocity, the velocity factor. So we have CV to be equal to three, divided by three plus V, where V is the pitch line velocity. All right, then it says that this for ordinary cut gears operating at velocity up to um, 12.5 millimeters. Okay, so if the velocity is less than 12.5, we could use this one, but what we were not given, the information we don't have from the equation is whether it is uh, carefully cut or is ordinary cut. Was it stated? Yeah, so if I look at the question, I said um, 
a bronze spare pinion drives a cast iron. Uh, let's go back and look at it. So, a bronze spare pinion rotating at this drives a cast iron spare gear at a transmission ratio of 4.1. The allowable static stress for the bronze pinion and cast iron gear are 84 megapascals and 105 megapascals respectively. The pinion has 16 standard uh, 20 degree full depth involute. Please, there is feedback if your your own is on loudspeaker. Please minimize it. Yeah. Okay, so we don't know whether it's um, carefully cut or ordinary cut. So here, yeah, let's assume that it's ordinary cut. And then we'll, in that case, we'll select the first option for the velocity factor. So if it's ordinary cut, the pitch line velocity we've calculated, we can see that it's less than uh, 12.5 so in that case we can say that our cv our cv is equal to so we have cv to be equal to um three divided by three plus v and this will be equal to three divided by Three plus four point zero two one. So if you calculate this, what answer do you get? Um, okay, so we have zero point four two seven as the velocity factor. Then from here, we can determine uh, which of the two gears is stronger, okay? And that will help us to know which one to use for the design. So in this case, we need to determine the um, Lewis form factor, the form factor Y. And why, and the form factor Y, we can determine it based on the type of tooth profile that we have. And if we go back and read, you see that it has been stated that we are having an involute, okay? Uh, we have um, the pinion has 16, stand, 16 uh, standard. 20 degree full depth involute teeth of model that. So we are dealing with 20 degree full depth involute uh, profile. So if that is the case, we need to obtain the uh, form factor based on that information. So the Lewis form factor, um, we can determine that from these equations here. So we have y, which is the form factor, is equal to all this expression for the 14.5 degrees. All right, but we're dealing with 20 degree full depth involute system. So uh, it should be this one here, okay? So we'll have, we'll have this as the formula for the Lewis form factor. So we go back and then we put down the formula. So we have YP. So we have the form factor. YP to be equal to uh, 0 0.154, okay? Minus 0 0.912 divided by T 
t so if we are dealing with the form factor for the pinion we use this formula because dependent on the number of teeth and this would give us um, 0 0.154 minus 84 come again So I got what eight forward. Eight four eight eight two. Eight eight two. Yes, please. Okay, so that will be divided by M. No point. Point what? Four three seven eight. Four three seven eight. So let's say four three eight. But there is M here, so it has to be divided by M like that. So that'll be our WT. And uh, this should be in the newtons, the unit for it in terms of M. The velocity factor we're told that we should use we should use uh, CV to be equal to 3 divided by 3 plus V. So this will be equal to 3 divided by 3 plus, then our V is 0 0.236 M. So we leave that as that. I will just leave it like that. Now let's determine the form factors, the Lewis form factors for the gear and the pinion. Then we're able to determine which of them is stronger. Then we'll use it for the design. Okay. So the form factor YP for the pinion, we were told that if you use the value 0 0.154 minus 0 0.912 divided by tp and this will give us um, 0 0.0 0 0.154 minus 0 0.912 divided by the TP, we have the value to be 15, so 1.5. If you calculate this, what do you get? Mm -hmm. Is what? Please for the CV or YP. YP. The CV will leave it like that because there's no much we can do about it. So we leave it that way. But let's determine the YP. Okay. Okay. What are you getting? I think it should be. Uh, zero point what? Zero point zero nine three two. Um, hello. Okay. Say so got zero point what? Zero nine three two point zero nine three two zero point zero nine three two. Okay. Then how about the for the gear? 
So that is equal to 0 0.154 minus 0 0.912 over TG. So the gear, the number of seats on the gear will be what? Uh, the gear ratio is three. So on the pinion, we have 15. So it's going to be three times 15. If you calculate this, what do you get? Mm -hmm. Zero point. Zero point. Zero point one three three seven. Zero point one three three seven. Okay. So now we can determine the strength factor. We know that the strength factor is the product of these values, the form factor, the tooth form factor, and then the allowable static stresses. So we have sigma OP times YP to be equal to static stress allowable for the pinion is 120 megapascal, so we have 120 times 0 0.0932. The answer will be what? Then we have sigma O gene times Y gene. The allowable static stress is 100. So times 0 0.1337. So what answers do you get for the two? This one is equal to what? The first one is equal to 11.184. 11.184, okay. And the second Sir, one? please, this is 0 0.0932. Yes. For the Y. Yes, yes. So it is 120 times YP. Yes. How about the second one? Thirteen point three seven. Thirteen point three seven. Seven. Okay. So again we can say that this value here okay it's less than that but this is less than that so we have sigma dot p y p to be less than sigma dot g times the y g Okay, so from this, we can say that the pinion is still weaker. And the, here we are determining this. Though the materials were not mentioned, but the allowable static stresses were mentioned. And because the allowable static stresses were mentioned, then they are different. That tells us that the materials too are different. Okay. Because for the same material, the allowable stresses should be the same. All right. So we have this. Then... Um, that tells that the opinion is the weaker one. So the opinion is the weaker one. We need to apply the Lewis equation to the opinion. And when we apply the Lewis equation, we know that the Lewis equation WT is equal to sigma naught 
in this case, we are using for the pinion P. CV, okay. Then we have the face weight. We have pi, M, and then YP. So from here, we can say that the WT, which we calculated earlier, in terms of M, we had the WT to be equal to this value here. Okay. So with that information, we can uh, say that we can say that that value which we are having is what is eight. Um, eight four eight H two. So we have um. Wait, what is this? Eight four eight eight two point four. What do you have the values there? So that should be equal to um, the other side of the expression. So we have the sigma y, sigma dot p, which is 120. So we have 120. Our CV is this expression, three plus, um, 0 0.23 something. What was the other values? Um, okay, three, uh, two, three, six. Two, three, six. M. Then it was stated that the face weight is equal to 14 M. So we have this value times 14 times the model. Then we have another one, which is pi. And then there's some M here, which also has to come M. Then we have YP and YP, we calculated it to be equal to 0 0.0932. So uh, we're going to simplify this and it should be in terms of M, we will have an equation in M. Okay, so simplify this side. If you simplify this whole side, what do you get? If you simplify this whole side here, you should get something like 1476 m square divided by 3 plus 0 0.2. Two, three, six, and should get something like this. Should be equal to eight, four, eight, eight, two point four, three, eight divided by m. Do you get that by simple after simplifying? Do you have that? Please cross check. Are you there? Hello? Yes, 
Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, what do you have for that one? Do you have this when you simplify this expression here? Please speak so that we can continue. Okay, so from this point, we can just cross multiply and then uh, we derive some cubic equation from this. Okay, so if you multiply this side by m and divide by that, and this side come here, we are going to get three plus 0 0.236 m to be equal to, so we have this times that, that'll give you m cube. All right, this value. Hello, say. Yes. Six. Sir, please, I didn't get. Then m square. What did you get? Say so I get? got four five six point four five six point zero two four one. Who else is having the same? That's what I got. Who is having the same? Uh, I had a sim similar answer, 455. 455. Five. I had 455.045. 455.045. Yes, yes, square. Yes, sir. Mm. So here, what did you multiply? We have, you can expand this one first, okay? Uh, we have 120 times 14 times pi times this value times three, let me confirm. 120 times three. Hello, are you there? Hello? Yes, sir. How did you calculate it? What and what did you put in your... Hello, sir. And what did you put? We have 120, so much, 120 times three. Do that. Times 14. Times pi. Times 0 0.0932. Multiply that and see what you get. Okay, we have 120 times 3. Ah, uh, say yes. Uh, so, where are you getting the So, I had your answer. So one, one, I had 1475, mm. not 76. Point. I had 1475.694. 694, okay, let's put that. Yes, sir. So you have uh, 575, okay. Point six nine four. 
m square so it means that this one too will change so we have 5.694 Okay, so if you simplify this expression here, what do you get? This one. This 1475.694 divided by 84882. something. If you simplify that one, what do you get? Mm -hmm. Is what? What is this one? Zero point zero one seven three. And this one should be m cube, eh? because uh, the m from here multiplied yes. it divided by this. So yes, you say you got zero point zero one seven zero one four. Seven four. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have that meters cube. From here, um, this uh, is a is a cubic equation. Okay. Or uh, we can rewrite it and say that zero point. We can write and say that zero. Point zero one seven four um, minus sorry m cube minus zero point two three six m minus three is equal to zero. So this is a cubic equation, and you can solve it. With your calculator, can you solve, punch this and let's see what you get. So solve this one and let's see what we get from there. I done. Uh -huh. Finished. You are done. Uh, there are six point three seven three. Six point three seven three. Okay, so the other complex numbers you have yes, it out. So we have um okay to be equal to six point what is this six point three seven six point yeah six point three seven three okay so six point three seven three as the module the model is always in millimeters but if we have this information you see this is not a standard a model that we can use so 
you need to go to the table and determine the proper model. All right, so um, from the table, we can obtain the standard model, okay? So we have six here and we have eight. Of course, eight is a huge number. So we can go for a six. It's closer to six than eight. So we can say that the model should be equal to six. We can say that the model okay. should be six. Yeah. Because... Um, as we know, if, if the model is smaller, then it means that we are going to have more number of teeth and that will help us to avoid interference of the system, okay? So let's say that the value for the model, we are taking six millimeters. And if we take six millimeters, we can go ahead now and determine the other parameters for the gear. So we have the model to be equal to six millimeters. Now from there, we can determine the face width and we were told that the face width B is equal to 14 M, okay. And if we have determined that M should be equal to six, then we can say that the face width should be equal to 14 times six. And that should give us what? Mm -hmm. What's the value? Eighty-four. Eighty-four. So we are taking 84 as the model. So that will be in millimeters. Now let's determine the, we're asked to determine the pit circle diameter of the pinion and of the gear. So for the pinion, we know that the pit circle diameter, BP is equal to MTP, okay? So a pitch circle diameter will be equal to what? Six times the TP is 15. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. What do you get for this one? 90. 90. And then we also have that, that of the gear is equal to MTG. And that will be six. The number of teeth for the gear we've not determined, but we use the gear ratio. So three times 15. The gear ratio is three times 15. That will be the number of teeth on the gear. And this also gives us what? Yes, Doc. Two seven. I'm at. You said what? Two seven zero. Two seven zero millimeters. So these are the information needed. So um. With these parameters we have, it means that 
the, the amount of power that is being transmitted, when it's not point of strength, this uh, gear will be able to survive. Any question? Any question? Any question? So, in summary, we determine the uh, pitch line velocity. Okay. We determined also. We determine the load that is to be transmitted, the tangential load, by using the pitch line velocity. We assume a service factor based on the assumption that we are using steady loading with eight to ten hours per day shift, and then we. I were able to determine the WT in terms of the model because the velocity we determined was in terms of M. Okay, so when it's up to that, we have this to be the WT. The velocity factor, we're given that the velocity factor should be given, you should take this formula for the velocity factor, three divided by three plus V, which is, equal to three divided by three plus the the v is this value here in terms of m then uh, we determine the yp which is the uh, tooth form factor for the pinion and then that of the gear and we use that to determine whether the gear or the pinion is stronger and from that, we were able to know that the gear is stronger than the pinion. And because of that, the design should be based on the pinion because the pinion is the weaker element. So we apply the Lewis equation to the pinion. And then um, we substitute the information we have for all the parameters in the Lewis equation, which are this one. So first of all, we have the WT equals 120, which is the W sigma OP, the static allowable static stress for the pinion. And then the velocity factor, and 14M, we're told that the face width is 14 times the model. So we have 14M here, times pi times M times the form factor for the pinion. And you realize here that this value 120 is in megapascals, but if we just written 120 here, and that's because this value here is in millimeters, all right? The model is in millimeters, that is in millimeters. So if you uh, are to convert them to meters, it should have 10 exponent 3, which will cancel out the 10 exponent 6 over here. That's with this with 10 exponent negative 3, so that will cancel out. 10 is with negative 3, 10 is with negative 3 to cancel out 10 is with 6. So you will have just this expression. Okay, then uh, from there, we have this expression here. From this one, we simplify this, we can obtain this value here. Then from here, we simplify it further. We got that. Another simplification gave us this. So this is a cubic equation and we can rewrite it like that then we solve this cubic equation we are having the model to be equal to 6.373 so from a standard tables we determine that the model is six should be six millimeters having obtained the model we can go ahead and determine the other parameters for the gear so first the face width which was is to be 14 times the model so we can say that we have 14 times 6 which is 84 millimeters 
And also we have the bit circle diameter for the pinion, which is M, the model times the number of teeth on the pinion that gave us 90 millimeters. And then the bit circle diameter for the gear, which is M times the number of teeth on the gear. And that also gave us 170 millimeters. I think that's all the information needed for this particular question. In the question, our time is almost up. In the question before we enter class. Any question? All right, thank you very much. I've forwarded the, your project to your class rep, so uh, I think he will share with you and uh, you prepare. And God willing, um, in our next meeting, we'll start with a different topic on gear design. We'll start, I think, with the design of helical gears, okay? Um, you have the material, class reps said the material is available, so you get it and you can read. And we agree that we are going to take our first quiz in the last week in this month. So also prepare. Thank you very much for your time. God bless you and see you some other time. Bye. Okay, so we have this one divided by 16. If you punch this, what do you get? Mm -hmm. What's the answer? See, today 0.457. 0.457. 0.457. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Who is having the same? 0 0.097. Okay, thank you. So it should be 0 0.097. Nine seven, okay. Then uh, we need to also determine the form factor for the gear. So we also have the same zero point one five four minus zero point nine one two divided by T G. So we have zero point um, one five four minus 0 0.912 divided by, in this case, we need to determine the number of teeth on the gear, okay? And that is mainly going to be the gear ratio times the uh, number of teeth on the pinion. So the gear ratio here is four. So we are going to have four times the number of teeth on the pinion, 16. So if you, Calculate this to what do you get? Is what? Mm. Zero point one three nine. So we have um, zero point one three one. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. So from here, we can determine which of the two uh, elements are is stronger by determining the um, the strength factor. Okay. So the strength factor we have sigma O P times Y P. All right, and that will be equal to what is the 
form factor for the uh, pinion. Sorry, the static allowable static stress for the pinion that is 84 megapascals. Recording and so 84 megapascals. You're going to have the value to be 84 times the form factor for the pinion 0 0.097. What do you get for this? Mm -hmm. It's what? Eight. Are you there? Eight point one four eight. Eight point. 148. 148. 148. Okay. Then we do same for the gear times the form factor for the gear. So we have 105 times that one. So that is 139. 0 0.139. Sorry. So we have 0 0.139. What do you get for these two? 14.595. Okay. So with these two, we can say that what we have here, okay, is greater than Sorry, it's less than this one. So we can say that the sigma um, not gene, the uh, product of sigma not gene and the sigma y gene is greater than the product of sigma p, sigma not p times the y p. All right, so because of that, we can say that the pinion is what? Is the weaker element, okay? And if the pinion is the weaker element, we therefore have to design the system based on the pinion. Are we okay? So now that we are going to determine the power that the um, a gear set can carry or can transmit, it should be based on the power that the pinion can transmit. Are we okay? Yes, All right, then from here, we need to determine, sorry, I'm going. we need to, determine the power that it can transmit by determining the transmitted load, okay? By using the Lewis equation. And we know that the Lewis equation, uh, W WT is equal to um, sigma naught P CV times the face weight pi M and then the YP. And we are using sigma naught P, the static stress for the pinion and then the form factor do it from factor for the pinion because we've identified that the pinion is the weaker element, okay? So you design based on the pinion. We determine this uh, load based on the pinion. So the WT will be equal to sigma naught P. We have that to be 84 
So we have 84. CV, we calculated CV. And what value did we get for that? So we have CV to be equal to 0 0.427. So over here, we need to put that 0 0.427. The face width, we're given the face width. And that is what? The face width is uh, 90. The face width, we have 90. So we have here to be... 90 times the pi times 8 and times y and y what value do we have for yp so we have the value to be zero point, that is value, 0 0.097. And when you calculate this, what answer do you get? Hmm? What's the answer? Yes. What do you have? Seven eight six nine point seven five six. So we have seven eight six nine point what? Seven five six. Seven five six. Yes, sir. Okay, Newtons. And you, you, you will realize something here that the allowable static stress is in mega pascals, okay? So 10, 10 times 10 to the power six. Mm -hmm. This one here. We, we have the face width was given to us in millimeters, all right? Yes, uh, yes. And then we also have the model in millimeters. So these two, if you convert them to meters, all right, they are they will cancel out the mega here. So that is why here yeah, we have just put the 84 and then we've left this in millimeters and that in millimeters. Okay. Yes, sir. Or if you like, you can just put 84 times 10 exponent 6, and then we have 90 times 10 exponent negative 3. Then 8 times 10 exponent negative 3. So the negative to negative 3 will cancel out the exponent 6. Then you have it. So that is how we obtain this value here. All right. So based on this one, we can determine the power that can be transmitted. Okay. And the power is equal to what? What's the formula for power? Are you there? What yes, sir. The form for power is what? Power is equal to, in terms of torque, what is the value? T omega. What? T omega. What is yes, omega sir. in terms of N? Um, mm. 2 pi n on 2 pi n on 60. On 60. Yes, sir. So we have 
2 pi nt on 60. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, T here is the torque. Yeah. T is the torque, and the torque will determine the torque from the uh, transmitted load or the tangential load times the radial distance to the center of the gear, which is the which is half the pitch circle diameter. All right, so we can also say that two, this is equal to two pi n. Then the T, we have WT, okay, times D, DP on two. Okay, so it will be times DP divided by 60. All right, so this and that will go. And what are we going to get? Oh, let me put it here. We have um, pi n w t d p divided by sixty, and you will notice that this um, pi n d p on sixty is equal to the velocity, the pitch line velocity, which we calculated earlier on. You can see that here. So we have pi dp and p divided by 60. That is the velocity. So it means that um, we will have our power that is being transmitted. The power that is being transmitted P to be equal to W T times V. And that is seven, eight, six, nine point seven, five, six times the pitch line velocity, which I think we got four point what? We had four point. Four point four point zero two two one zero two one. Okay. Yes. So when you calculate that, what do you get? You get three one six four four. What? Three one six four four. Three one. Six, six, four, 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 gear can transmit from the standpoint of strength. So uh, it cannot transmit more than this based on the information given. If it goes beyond this one, it's likely that um, the gear will fail. And of course, the weaker one will fail first because this is based on the weaker gear, which is the pinion. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. So that's what we have. So in summary, we determine the uh, DP, okay, the pitch circle diameter. We obtain the pit line velocity. And from the pit line velocity, we're able to identify which equation for the velocity factor to use. And this one is less than uh, 12.5 meters per second. So the velocity factor to be used is this one year. Then the, from there, we determine the uh, YP, which is the uh, the Lewis form factor for the pinion and for the gear. 
they will identify which of the two is weaker and the one with lesser strength factor which is the product of the stat allowable static stress and the Lewis form factor will give us the deciding factor so here between the two realize that the pinion is weaker because it's having a lesser value compared to the gear and we are doing this because they are made of dissimilar metals assuming the metals are the same if they are the same they'll be having the same material strength so the allowable static stress for the pinion will be the same as that of the gear in that case you don't need to determine this product here you just know straight away that the pinion will be the weaker one okay and you have to state it why you are designing with the pinion so in this particular case we determine the strength factor and realize that the pinion is the weaker one because the product of allowable static stress for the pinion the form factor for the pinion is less than that of the gear and then from that point we apply the lewis equation to the pinion okay so this is the lewis equation for the pinion because we are using the allowable static stress for the pinion and then the lewis uh, form factor for the pinion so when we obtain the from that we obtain the load to be transmitted or the tangential load then through that we determine the power that to be transmitted and the power because we already have v, the power is simply equal to the wt times v okay wt we have it v we have already calculated for it so we have the power to be this so this is the amount of power that can be transmitted from the standpoint of strength based on the information given about this gear system any question Any question? Uh huh. Okay. Um. Let's go to the next one. The next one. Okay, so we have this. Can you read it? Uh, it says that a pair of straight teeth spare gear is to transmit 20 kilowatts when the pinion rotates at 300 RPM. The velocity ratio is 1 is to, one, one is to 3. The allowable static stresses for the pinion and the gear materials are 120 megapascals and 100 megapascals respectively. The pinion has uh, 15 teeth and its face width is 14 times the model. Determine one, the model, two, face width, three, the pitch circle diameters of both the pinion and the gear from the standpoint of strength only, taking into consideration the effect of dynamic loading. It says that the tooth form factor y can be taken as this value here and then the velocity factor uh, cv can be taken as this value okay so from here this information has been given how do we uh, determine these uh, particulars of the gear so we have the model face width pitch circle diameters of both gears then the, yeah i think those are the things we have to determine from the standpoint of strength okay so let's go back let me copy this one Okay, so we're given uh, some information.
we've been given the So we have, what do we have? Um, power, okay. So we have power P is equal to 20 kilowatt. We also have um, the number of teeth on the pinion to be equal to Sorry, the speed of the pinion is 300. And then we have the velocity ratio saving R to be um, three. So the velocity ratio was given as one is to three. Static stress for pinion. 120 megapascal. That of the gear is um, 100. Pinion number of teeth is 15. The face width B is mentioned to be 14 times the model. So let's say 14 M, where M is the model. Okay. And the model is in millimeters. Okay. So let's say that these are the information we have. What do we do from here? Are you there? Hello? Okay. Um, we need to determine the pitch line velocity. Pitch line. Okay. And uh, from there, yes, yes. And, uh, from there, we need to also uh, find out in the equation. We're not given whether um, as the system is operating, uh, there are some service factors because uh, we don't know whether it's steady loading conditions, how many hours is operating, operating per shift or whatever. We don't have those information. All right, but. Uh, for the sake of the calculations, we may have to assume some values, but let's determine the pitch line velocity. So the pitch line velocity uh, V is equal to, again, pi dp uh, np divided by 60. All right, so we know the... Um, we know that we know that this dp is a function of um, m and tp we don't know the pit uh, the pit circle diameter we don't have that one but we can determine it in terms of m m and t we know the number of teeth for the pinion. So let's up to the values here. We can say that um, this same equation is the same as pi mtp, okay, np divided by 60. And if you put in the values we have, 
um, we're going to have pi times m times 15, which is the number of teeth. Okay. 300 divided by 60. And if you calculate this one, what do you get? You have what? In terms of M. Mm -hmm. 75 is what 75 m 75 m <laughs> are you sure pi m 15 300 divided by 60 so pi times 15 times 300 divided by 60 is what yeah, you get 75. Hey, wait. 235.62 M. Okay. 23. 5.62 M. 62 M. And this M is the model. But which unit do we put here? Remember that over here we have our DP, the pit uh, uh, line, sorry, the pit circle diameter. Um, if we are determining the velocity in meters per second, it's supposed to be in millimeters, sorry, meters. We have to convert from millimeters to meters. <laughs> sorry. And uh, our model is in millimeters. So let's assume that our model is in millimeters and also the um, deep, sorry, let's take the model to be in millimeters because the DP we've already converted to M times TP. So we are taking M to be in millimeters. And of course we have NP, which is revolutions per minute. That has nothing to do with that unit uh, meters or millimeters. So from this equation here, our model, which is always in millimeters, we can say that we need to convert the expression we have here to uh, meters because the assumption is that the model is in millimeters. So what we have here sh should be uh, millimeters per second. And if that is the case, uh, then in meters per second, we are going to have 0 0.23562 M, okay, meters per second. And here we are going to derive an equation from which we'll be able to determine the value for M. The next thing we need to determine is the WT. WT, we know that as I was taking you through the procedure and gear design, we need to determine the transmitted load. Let's go back to that one. So first of all, uh, we obtain, we need to obtain the tangential load and the peak line velocity. Okay, so the tangential load we can obtain from this equation here, WT is equal to P on the vein times CS. CS is the service factor. And the service factor we obtain from this table. But from this table, we don't have an information whether it's steady loading, light shock load, medium shock or heavy shock intermittent loading for three hours per day or eight to 10 hours per day. We don't have this information. So uh, we need to assume a factor for it. So let's assume that um, 
that CS is one based on the assumption that uh, we are using a steady load condition with eight to 10 hour hours per a day. Okay? So we have eight to 10 hours shift per day. In that case, for steady load in our uh, service factor will be one. All right, so with this information, we can say that the WT, which is equal to P uh, divided by V times C S is equal to 20, which is the power times 10, So times 10 exponent three divided by uh, what we obtain here for the V. So here we are taking this to be the V. So we have 0 0.23562, okay, M. And we have times the service factor one. If you calculate this, what do you get? In terms of M. Uh, are you there? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, talk. Okay, Sam, come.